All right, everyone. So this is going to be another pretty quick video compared to some of the other ones. Uh, in this one, I just wanted to expand upon what I showed in my previous video or one of my previous videos dealing with packages in Python, where we went over you know, using the cryptography package and digital signatures. Uh, one of the things that I didn't cover in that video was the process of exception handling. You know, what exactly happens in your code when something unexpected occurs? Um, in many cases, when that happens, so when the, the unexpected happens, um, your program will sometimes break. Um, in that case, they, they typically call it, you know, an exception occurring. And at that point, rather than potentially cause further damage to your system or the code, the execution stops. Um, so there's certain ways that you can look for this. A lot of it comes with experience, uh, but you can handle it so that it gracefully shuts down. It doesn't necessarily lose all the work you were working on at that time. And that's what this video is going to focus on. Um, so we're going to look at the the code we had previously. Um, you know, if you remember from this code, um, if not, I encourage you to go back and look at that video. Uh, but essentially what we did is we have a couple instances come up here where the first thing it does is it asks us for a user and a password, and then it'll check to see if there's already a private key that exists for one of those users. Um, if it, there is, it'll load that key. It'll you know, create some general general data. It'll save it to a file. And then uh, it'll sign that information. Again, we can see an example here. We included the signature inside the file. And then later inside the, the code, we load that information. We extract the signature. And then we verify that the signature is correct. Again, I encourage you to go back and look at that for more details. Uh, but that's not exactly what we're going to focus on specifically in this case. So if we run the code as is, as expected, um, you'll see that it executes perfectly fine. Uh, so remember last time we had to create a virtual environment in order to run our cryptography package. So I need to do that real quick. I called my virtual environment my VENV. So we just use on Windows the virtual environment name, scripts, activate. Okay, so we can see our virtual environment is activated. And then I could just do Python demo2.py. Okay, so it asks for the username. I'll use Bob because that's what we have already. Password, its password was ASDF. And then it continues as expected. But if I run the same code and do Bob, and let's put in a bad password, you see that the code explodes. We get all this output, um, and it produces what's called a traceback. Basically, it, it helps you try to find where the problem is. And if we look through this, we can see that the error occurred. Let's see. So we had load private key. And then after that, there's a lot of... Uh, other Python code that's not directly related to what we created. So that's where we'll look. So this line 12, and it's calling this load private key, which again, we can see here, we have line 22, load private key, or load uh, pem private key, which is one of our custom made definitions, I think. Nope, this is one of them that's from base pi. So that's outside of what we're doing. So in this case, we're calling the serialization uh, code. This is one of those that we imported from cryptography. And the problem is that we're loading the private key, but it's failing before that point. So we can see here that it said, it gave us an incorrect password. Okay, so why did we get an incorrect password? 
because one of the things we passed here was the password, which in this case was AAAA, I think. Instead of the actual correct password. So that caused a, an error. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce what's called the, the try accept block. So the first keyword is try. And of course, we have the colon. So everything here needs to be indented in. But then we also need a counterpart to this, which is called accept. And this, it'll basically say, I'm going to try to execute this part of the code. If I have a an error occur, I'm going to drop down, skip the rest of this, and move into this point. And in this case, I'm just going to say print. OK, now let's rerun this. Now right, we're going to use Bob. And we're going to put in a bad password again. So we see we do get the output exception occurred. But after that happens, you know, we have the private key load. We see we have the completed load private key, but we still have another exception. That's because we're saving inside this private key the output from this load private key method. Well, because there is a failure, what gets returned here is basically none. There's no value for this. Well, that creates unexpected behavior because when we get to this point when we're signing, we're passing in the private key, but the private key is a none. So we get a, a variable. So again, it, it creates unintended consequences. So what we'll do in this point is we're going to move up here. And in case we want to figure out exactly what type of error occurred, you know, I can just uncomment or comment this out for now. And rerun it. And what you see here is we have this attribute error. OK, so that gives us a little bit of hint what's going on but may not exactly be what we're expecting. So one thing we can do if we're trying to figure out exactly what type of exception is happening, you can do the generalized exception and just call it as E. So it'll store whatever the exception that comes in here as a variable called E. And then after this, we can also do type E. So what this is going to do is going to print out the exception occurred, but also print out what type of exception it is. So we see we get a value error exception. So this is important because now we can narrow down the specific type of exception. And now we can, in this case, if a value error occurs, only this point here will be executed. So we do see that it actually does. So we'll change this a little bit and just have it return, we'll say, You know, give it a little bit better um, explanation here because this is coming through as a, this only happens if there's going to be a bad password that you pass in here. And then we're also going to have it return none. Now, because we we're having it return none, we can also change the code down here. And then do a real quick check.
and we can use a special command to exit gracefully. And we'll just make a note of that. So let's try this again. All right, so now we don't see all this, you know, horrible, hard to read code, this error messages. What we do see is that we get a bad password message. And then because we returned a none type here, then it says our password error occurred exiting the program. And then the program exits gracefully. Now, one thing I want to show here, we did have this a very specific error type, a value error. Another common e exception you might inc uh, encounter is the I.O. error. This typically happens when you're trying to open a file that may not exist. So I'm changing it to I.O. error right now. And if I run the same code, you'll see we do get the error. So why did that happen? It's because this is looking specifically for this type of error. Because what happened was not an IO error, it skips all this. Um, so you can either generalize it as exception, or you can narrow it down to the specific type um, and get the, the error message. Um, generally, if you do it like this, and there's multiple places where an exception could occur in your code, then it may be a little bit ambiguous. Um, if there's, if you're doing multiple things that may cause an error, it's better to narrow it down and then at the end have a, a generalized exception to ca capture um, anything else that may have happened. So this is one area. Another example that you may have an exception is this verify message. So part of it is verifying that the, the messages and the signature are the same. So if we change the message, so this is going to be definitely different than what we pass in when we're overwriting it. Um, actually, we're doing an encode here, so we don't need to pass this in as bytes. This time I will put in the correct password. Okay, we had a pause there, but um, in this case, we have the error in the, uh, the ver verification. We get a little bit more information this time because it actually raises, in this case, it throws an exception called invalid signature. So this is another, another area we can do it. And we can say, try. Accept, and in this case, we're going to do an invalid signature. And in this case, we need to have is coming from cryptography that exceptions. Now it knows what we're talking about. Oh, I see what's going on here. It's because uh, all right, sorry about that. I'm back. My uh, 
program crashed for a second. Okay, so the reason it was having this message here is because we're still in this verify method. So if I put it outside of here, Now, oh, I need to reactivate our, our virtual environment. Right, and now let's try this again. Okay, and you can see because we changed the message, we got the invalid signature message. So that um, could be something you can incorporate into your code so that it grace, gracefully shuts down. If you have uh, data that you're storing for a long running process, you have one of these exceptions encountered, you can save the data uh, into a temporary file so that you can come back to it later. You can uh, you can save output to a log file, uh, all kinds of stuff you can do to kind of handle the situation. Um, but a lot of this comes from experience, um, figuring out how your your code works, where it doesn't work. Some of it's just from testing. Uh, but over time, you'll you'll get an idea of some of the areas where you will need exceptions. So anytime you're doing any type of I.O. operation, writing to a disk or reading from a disk, in this case, when we're doing this, you know, opening our public keys folder, if that file doesn't exist, we could wrap that around a try except block and, you know, print out an error that the, the code doesn't exist. Or the, the file doesn't exist. Um, if you're doing signatures, verification will often cause it to crash if the signature fails. Uh, we saw that if the password doesn't match when trying to load the public key and the private key, that'll cause a an error. Some of the packages out there will have documentation for different types of exceptions that occur and how to handle them. Uh, so I encourage you to, to look into that. Uh, so hopefully this was useful. You have a better idea of how to incorporate exceptions, exception handling, so that your code can gracefully handle them when they're encountered. Good news, everyone. That's right. Good news, everyone. This is Doc here. Made it to the end of the video, which means you liked it. So please click on a thumbs up below the video. If you have any comments, anything else you'd like me to see put a video together for, uh, leave a comment, ask any questions. And of course, more videos like this are coming, so be sure to subscribe.